What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode we are going to be going over converting our 2.5D fighter to 3D part 2. So specifically in this episode we are going to be covering camera boundaries for the front and the back, or the foreground and the background. So essentially if we are to come into our game and select our characters, select our stage, load up here, we get through our stage intros here, we will be able to move forward and backward. We don't have animations for it yet, but we just implemented moving forward and backward in the previous episode. However, we fell off almost immediately because this was only a 2D and 2.5D fighter before. So now I have increased the size of the arena. And I also have a min and a max that we are generating for our camera boundaries in the front and the back. So both player one and player two can move and they won't fall off. So we've essentially set the bounds of the arena for left and right, front and back. So there we are guys, that's what we're going to be covering in today's episode. If you want to check out the entire fighting game playlist where we did everything from our attacks, hitboxes, throws, all that good stuff, you can click this link in the top right corner right here to see that entire playlist. If you're only interested in the actual 2.5D, 2D to 3D conversion that we've done in that little mini series, I'll link you to this episode right here, that's the first episode of that behavior. But with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. Today we're gonna to be doing everything in the blueprint because we're just going to be modifying our current camera logic. And the camera logic in the fighter was all in blueprint. Of course, if that changes and gets modified to code in the future, then we'll modify this behavior as well. So you have nothing to worry about there. Now starting off, make sure that if you are using the same project that I am, so you have a 2D fighter and a 3D fighter and you're actually trying to implement both at once, you go into your base character BP, like we did in the first episode, and we make sure that our constrain to plane is disabled for this episode for the 3D movement. In my fighter series for the 2.5D, I went ahead and enabled this again. I just wanna make note this has to be disabled, otherwise you won't be able to move in 3D space. If you're going back and forth while you're working on this, just make sure for this episode, constrain to plane is off. That way we can move on the X axis. Once that is done, we wanna to go to our default camera. For me, that's in blueprints, functional BPs, cameras, default camera. Now, this is our default fighting game camera. And in the event graph, we have this event use camera. So basically, anytime we load up a new level through level streaming, or if we restart the match, we do this behavior to spawn the proper camera edges. So we have our left outer edge, right outer edge, left inner edge, right inner edge. So those are all of our boundaries for the left and right walls and then i've also added this new behavior today in this comment three dimensional boundaries so front and back or foreground and background boundaries so this is the very first thing we want to do we just want to create some new boundaries that way we can track them and then assign them to the proper location rotation and scale or proper transform and this will allow us to not make our characters fall off the map when they go too far forward or too far back it just applies these actual walls here so that we have an actual arena that we can work in I'm going to do this just like I created my other camera edges in the series. It's very simple. We are going to spawn an actor of camera edge. Now, if you're not familiar with camera edges, basically they are just walls that I have made invisible, really hidden in game. That way we can't see them while we're playing, but they're just walls like this that block the characters from moving outside of them. If a character gets launched into one, they actually can bounce off of it if that move that triggered launch is enabling them to wall bounce. Some characters can actually wall jump off these walls. So they're more advanced than just the box, but that's all covered in those episodes in the fighting game series. So I'm going to ignore them. Just know that this is the class we are spawning today, this camera edge class. Think of the camera edge class, like a map boundary or an arena edge, that sort of thing. So going back into our default camera, we want to call spawn actor from class. And we're going to choose our camera edge class. And we need a spawn transform because we need to know where to spawn this actor. So I'm actually using the actor of the default camera as the transform. I'm going to modify it in a little bit here within this episode so you don't have to worry too much, but just some starting spawn transform is fine. And the camera is a pretty good spot because it's very close to where we're gonna want that front wall. It is also the same transform that we use for our other camera boundaries as well. Get actor transform and use the return value in the spawn transform section of the spawn actor node, and you'll be good to go. Now I wanna make 
a variable that I can track like I've done for all my other camera edges. And I've called this one front outer edge. We have an inner and an outer edge. The outers are the absolute maximums. The inner walls are moving with the characters so that they do have a maximum distance apart. We may want that with our front and back boundaries, but it's not required for this episode. Right now we're just worrying about the outer edges. So I've made a new variable by pressing the plus node here and I called it front outer edge. And for the type, I made it a camera edge object reference. Additionally, if you want to make this variable more quickly, you can drag off of your return value here and click promote to variable and then name it front outer edge. Now we want to do the same thing for our back outer edge. So either go ahead and make a new variable here or just create a new camera edge. Same thing, spawn actor from class, camera edge using get actor transform as the spawn transform and then using the return value to set back outer edge. So now we have two new camera edges, the front and the back that we want for today's episode. At this point, I'm calling a function set 3D boundaries. So we need to create this function. So add a new function, press plus function. I call this one set 3D boundaries. And it's quite simple what I'm doing. I'm really just hard coding some locations where we want these boundaries, just like we did in the initial episodes of our camera. We will have another episode on cameras in the 2D to 3D conversion. And in that episode, I will go over specific values that we want to use instead of hard coded values because this is actually pretty precise. So for now, let's just make sure we can move our boundaries to the front and back where we want them. First things first, I'm going to grab the player one reference and get their location. The reason for this is because the player one and player two should be at the same starting point. Use camera is called in begin play or when a rematch is done. So either way, the characters are gonna be at the same X location and I can use either of the references and get the same result. So logically, it just makes sense for me to use player one. Also, I know player one is within the bounds of where we want to place the boundaries, right? We want them to be contained within those walls. So it's also a good starting point for that reason. So grab our player one reference, the camera class, the use camera event, sets the player one and player two references based off the variables in the game mode. So only if they're valid will this happen. So when we get into here, we know we are using the player one reference right here, get it. And we wanna drag off of it and get actor location. Then from here, we can split the struct pin of the return value. So split the vector into the X, Y, and Z location. Since this is for the 3D boundaries, we don't care about the Y and the Z. They're going to remain the same. What we care about is the X. So I'm going to add, and if you're in Unreal Engine 4, it will actually be float plus float, but in Unreal Engine 5, it is just the add operator. So the same thing, and so now we have to plug in our default hard-coded value that we want. Again, this will be modified in a future episode, so for now, just pick a value that seems right. You'll probably have to play around with it to pick a solid value. I picked 700 for the front and back boundaries. This is going to be the front boundary, and the way you know what direction the front really is, is by looking at this little helper in the bottom left-hand corner here. So we can see that the x-axis is the depth, which we already know. My initial orientation is showing me that x positive is going this way. Whatever way the line's going is positive. So y positive is to the right, z positive is up, x positive is back. If we want the front boundary that is closer to the camera, closer toward us, it's actually going to be a negative value. So I'm going to add negative 700. Additionally, of course, you could subtract 700. It's really the same thing. And now we wanna make a new vector with this location but also with this negative 700 being applied. So we can call make vector, which is going to take in an X, Y, and a Z. The X result of the plus node is going to go in here, and then the Y and the Z are just going to go straight into that. And that's what we have here. Now, additionally, I've made a variable called front max, and I'm also going to make one called back max. These variables are going to store the actual max. X location of the front and back boundary. This can be useful for a lot of reasons. And we've gone over a lot of those for the left and right boundaries. We don't really need it for today's episode, but I do want to store it while we're in this function so we don't have to edit it and add it later. Essentially, this is going to be used so that we know our maximum boundaries when we do our inner boundaries for front and back. That way we don't have those inner boundaries move past the outer boundaries and thus allow the characters to exit the arena. We don't want that. So this is just a float variable. You can make a variable called front max as a float, or again, you could drag off and promote it to a variable. 
Now we have to actually use this behavior that we set up to set the transform of the front outer edge. So we want to grab our front outer edge variable and get it. Then we want to drag off of it and set actor transform. Call that. And in here we have the new transform, which we want to split the struct pin on this, and it will give us a location, rotation, and scale, just like you see here. Now, for the location, I have an actual value we want to use. So that is the return value from the make vector that we set up earlier. So return value goes into new transform location. The rotation and scale are also hard coded right now. Just be aware these values may be different for you. So for my rotation, I just wanted to rotate 90 degrees on the z-axis. The z-axis is the vertical axis in this case, so rotating it 90 degrees turns it from a square that looks like this So the length is going like behind where you can't see the camera to a square that looks like this. It's really wide. So that's that rotation. 90 degrees is the orientation that we want for the front and back boundaries. The X and Y rotation are fine to leave at zero. We don't want to change them. The scale is up to you. I made it a scale of 10 just so I know it would cover the entire width of the stage. Regardless of where the inner left and right boundaries are, it's not going to matter. So for new transform scale, I just left X and Z as one, but for Y, which is the width here, the left and right, I set that to be 10. Now after this, we really want to do the exact same thing for the back camera edge. So we're using player one reference and getting the actor location. I've split the struct pin to get the X, Y, and Z, and I'm dragging off the X value and adding positive 700. This one's going backward. It's going to be our background edge. Positive X is back. And the back edge is the one that's going to be behind the characters from the camera's perspective. So that's a positive 700 value that we're using here. We are making a new vector, passing in the X of the result of the addition, and then returning the Y and Z into the make vector as well. Then I have a variable back max, which is storing the result of the player one ref X value plus the offset for the back camera edge, which is that plus 700. So it goes in here. And remember, that's the same thing that's happening for the front edge. The return value x of the player one reference, we're adding a negative 700 or essentially subtracting 700 from that x value and then setting the front max to that. So then we want to grab our back outer edge variable here and get that. And we want to do the same thing we did with the front outer edge, just using our new value. So we want to call set actor transform again. And we're going to split that struct pin just like we did. And we're going to pass in the make vectors return value as the location. The new transform rotation is going to be 90 on the z-axis, and the scale is going to be 10 on the y-axis. Now, after we have this function created, we have to make sure we call it. So go back to the event graph. After spawning the front outer edge and back outer edge, we want to call set 3D boundaries. So just call your new function now, set 3D boundaries. And there you go. Now the last thing we need to do is just make sure our levels actually can hold these values that we've given them. So what I did was go back to my side scroller example map. You could do this to the persistent level if you have the level streaming like I do, or you could go to the map itself. And I just clicked on the ground platform, which in the side scroller example map is literally just called floor. And I've increased the scale of the floor to make it 2.0, and that was long enough. You could make it as long or as short as you want, just as long as your characters can't fall off. You can set the camera edges, the visualizer here, the box to not be hidden in game. That way you can see them while you're playing. So if I uncheck this and I go play a match. And so you can see we're coming into the game here and the boundaries are visible. So I can see my back boundary, my front boundary. And so if I move forward, I am going to fall off this map because this stage isn't long enough yet. So I'm going to disable my camera edge visualization make it hidden in game again because that makes it hard to see anything else going on but that is a good debugging technique when we need to see those exact positionings now we want to go back to the map that we actually were just on that way we can increase the floor size so for me that is called trail of the wise so we have trail of the wise level right here i am just going to increase the floor Now I want to go back to my persistent level so I can play the game regularly. So here we are. 
and my characters can walk around freely. Now, if I go all the way to the front, I don't fall off the map because the map is now big enough. And the same should be if I go all the way to the back. I don't fall out anywhere. And perfect. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode on converting your 2 or 2.5D fighter to 3D. If you did, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. And I want to give a huge thank you right here on screen to all the kind supporters on the Patreon, YouTube membership, and Discord subscriptions. You guys are awesome, and I really appreciate you. If you ran into any issues, feel free to join that Discord community. There's a link in the description. All that support is completely free. Other than that, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.